Welcome to the art studio. I'm Osnat, and I'm going to take you on a creative journey today, how to start a painting. I'm going to use an inspiration of Claude Monet as a guide to learning how to paint. So when you get into a painting, there's a lot of things to consider. We're going to look at composition. We're going to look at color mixing, how to use warm, cool, light, dark, source of light, shadows, and also brush marks, loads of different things to take into account when you approach the painting. So let's look at everything together um, as a whole. I'd like to um, look at one of Monet's paintings, a beautiful painting called Sea Coast at Tourneville, painted in 1881. And let's look at the painting first. So what I'm seeing here, it's a very simple structure. We have a horizon line and we have one object, which is the tree. Overall, in a first glance, this painting looks quite simple. But when you start looking into particular areas, you can see the complexity of the painting and the way that the artist executed it amazingly. And that's why these great artists are considered to be great, because they've provided us with this amazing array of ways of looking at painting and looking at color in particular to create the mood, the atmosphere, the perspective, the depth in the painting. So when we're looking at the right-hand side of the painting, you can see that there's a much cooler area where also there's a cast shadow of the tree. And he used lots of light blue in this area to create that deeper sense of placement in the picture plane. When we look at the left-hand side, we can see a much warmer palette with lots of pink and peach and oranges. They're very subtle, but they're still weaved into that green grassy area. This also seems to be where the light is coming from. If you look at the top left corner, you can see a very warm, yellowish kind of clouds coming through this area, which is then bringing the light source onto the painting. So first, we're going to get started with a bit of a sketch. It's not going to be too much. And that's why I wanted to choose something that is relatively simple, so we can really focus on the color mixing and on the painting itself, rather than the drawing stage. Also, your painting doesn't have to look exactly like this one. You can change it a little bit. It's all about bringing yourself into learning something new. All right, so I'm going to get started with a light sketch. You can use a pencil, you can also use a pastel, uh, which is easier to rub on a canvas. But then, if you use it lightly, it's just easy to just do that. I'm actually going to use a little bit of stronger marks, so it can be seen through the camera. So I'm just bringing a little bit of this headland in the front. And I'm not even going to draw the tree for now. We can see a bit of this water, the ocean. And then the tree just have a little bit of a placement. But I'm not going to sketch it yet. I actually want to start with the background first before I'm putting the main object on. So that's probably good enough just to get started for your main structure of your composition. So I'm going to get straight into the paint. And before that, I wanted to show the range of brushes that I'll be using today. I've got the thin to the thickest one. And we have the two different types of brushes, the round ones and then the flat, wider ones. There's different types of brushes. These two, for example, um, one of them is a bristle brush, and one of them is more of like a nylon brush. It doesn't matter, you can actually use lots of different types of brushes. 
I think the more um, range of brushes you have, the more interesting your painting can look and also you can decide which ones you like more. I guess the bristle brush will give you a little bit more of a mark. It will drag the paint across the canvas while the nylon ones are going to be softer. So if you want to not to have too many marks and you want it to be smoother, you might be using those brushes. All right. Let's put these away. I'm just going to put them in my water. For a palette, I've actually used um, some baking paper on top of a whiteboard. Uh, it's something that is very easy to change. If you wanted to clean your, instead of cleaning your, your palette, it's an easy way to just change with a home baking paper. So it's a good little tip. And um, we want to get straight into the paint. What I like doing is sometimes to actually create like a, a base layer for my canvas. A lot of artists uh, used the idea of imprimatur coat, which is the base coat of the painting. So if you want, before we get to the stage of the drawing, you could also paint your whole canvas in one color. It can be any color. It can be maybe a light blue or a light gray. It can work well for this scene. Uh, it can even be a yellow, because sometimes you want to use the contrary color to bringing some of that yellow warmth to come underneath those colors. So today we're just going to um, use flat color to begin with as the first coat. And then for the second coat, we're going to start mixing some colors and um, bringing in, blending them all together. So let's look at my colors. I've got um, some white over here. White obviously <clears throat> is a very good mixing color, so we want quite a bit of that. Lemon yellow, which is the cool yellow. The warm yellow, deep yellow or cadmium yellow that you can use. We've got the vermilion yellow, which is the warm. Alizarin crimson, cool red. Um, purple, deep purple, which is really beautiful for mixing colors and creating shadows. Thalo blue, which is warm and going more towards the greeny kind of tone. Sap green, which is more um, earthy. Burnt amber, a bit of a chocolatey brown. Ultramarine blue, which is a bit cooler. And then phthalo green, which is also cooler. So you can see I've actually put in my palette two cools, like cool and red from each tone. So cool yellow, warm yellow, cool red, warm red, cool blue, warm blue. And that really opens all the variety of combinations when you start mixing your colors. That's when all these colors really come into play. What I'm using here today is I'm using some acrylic paint by Derivan Matisse, which is an Australian brand. It's a local brand of paints and they're very good paints to get started with. They are from the professional series and I would really recommend if you want to get into painting and mixing to use professional type of paints because they have the real pigments in them and when we start mixing this is what matters. All right, so let's get into mixing. To mix, I always start with the light color first. So I'm starting with the white here and I'm just going to go with the next color next to it, the lemon yellow. Mix it up well, get the paint off your brush. You don't want to paint, uh, mix it and then leave all the paint in your jar. So you just want to make sure it comes off. So just as a start, a little lemony kind of yellow. I'm also going to mix a bit of green, sap green and white. You can see it's quite cool, so I might actually add a bit of yellow into it as well to warm it up a bit. Because often students um, think that to lighten a color you would use white, but that's not always the case. White is a very opaque color. 
and sometimes it just break down your pigment and that's not what you want. So if you want to lighten a green, you can use yellow. If you want to lighten uh, an orange or a red, yeah, you can use yellow as well. So you can use other tones rather than white. White is opaque and milky and it will just get your color to be non-transparent and quite pastel -y pretty quickly. But to begin with, I've got those. I might actually mix another blue. I'm getting the ultramarine blue and a bit of phthalo and mix them together. So I've got a bit of a darker shade here and with a different brush, I might mix a darker green, sap green with a bit of phthalo. Phthalo green is a very strong pigment, so I like to mix it with something else, a bit of brown or a bit of sap green. Here we go. So I'm ready to start my painting. I'm using quite big brushes to begin with. Uh, the, my canvas is a 16 by 20 inch, so it's not a huge canvas. Uh, it's nice and small, so we can really focus on the mark making and the little areas rather than a big painting. Obviously, if you're working on a bigger canvas, you can use bigger brushes as well, so you can get a quicker coverage to begin with. So um, I might just Start with that green, just to give it a base. Let's go with the lighter green here. I don't want to paint everything in the same green so I can still see my structure here. Nice, and let's mix a mid-green here. For this section. So what's nice about color mixing is you can mix as many colors as you want. Because we have endless range of colors in the world. Millions of colors. And uh, everyone have a different way of looking at color, of mixing color, which is quite nice. So that's it. This is pretty much my greenish area. And I can move into the blue. Going over that tree. You can also use a little bit more water in the beginning. Your paint can be a bit thinner, a bit more washy, especially if I'm doing like sky or something that's going to be quite light later on. Yeah, I can keep it quite washy. Probably not too much water, you don't want it to drip, but you just want a nice flow and just good coverage. Okay, there's the ocean, and I can move into the sky, which is going to be much lighter. So, more white, more water, mix it up. And, um, yeah, you really want to get into mixing colors. That's what's going to make your painting look much, much better than a more amateurish painting which didn't consider much of the mixing of colors. So if you're learning how to paint, you can use this technique that I'm showing today and you can paint 
different artists, look at different artists like Van Gogh, William Turner, different landscape painters um, that are fantastic to learn from. You want to learn from the best. All right, so that was pretty quick to get my first coverage to look at the main structure of my composition. Uh, mix a little bit of colors, but we're going to get much more into the secrets of mixing and tuning, fine tuning our painting into this beautiful Monet's vision. And what he did is actually he's really created lots of different colors and weaved them within a surface. So if we have a, an area of grass, it's not just going to be green. It's going to have loads of different other colors, pinks and purples and blues and browns, loads of different beautiful colors. And this is called the poetry of the painting, when we're actually starting to add things that are not there. But that's when you start painting with your soul as well. You start to bring in, in some other nuances that are not there, some things that are more like from your emotion, from your intuition, and also is really very, very much about your palette and your mixing. So don't be lazy to mix your colors. If you just squeeze them out of the tube and you think, oh, that looks like that green, I'm going to put it there, it's never going to have that fine tuning that we're looking for. All right? So if you think about music, when colors are kind of going together like tones and notes are going together in music, we want to look at it the same. We want to create harmony. And when you're mixing those colors, they're going to start singing together. All right? So let's go back into mixing. So I'm using smaller brushes now. For this section, I'm going to use small and round brushes. And I'm going to mix a variety of greens, while here I've only used two colors for each green. I'm going to use more colors for each combination. So I'm going to still use this green here, sap green, with a bit of brown, with a touch of blue. And I got this beautiful olive. So it starts to actually look more natural. Then I'm going to go again, a bit more sap, maybe with a bit of purple. And just experiment, just see what happens when you start mixing colors. If I add a little bit of yellow into the side of this one, I can create another tone without mixing that all together. Just another tone there, which is quite nice. I like that. So you can see the difference between those three to this one. This is very green, it's too green. I want to change it a little bit, maybe touch of purple into that. It's not too bad. You can always add a dash of water, mix it up. Acrylic paint dries relatively fast. So you can use different mediums, like a painting medium that slows the drying time. But also you can add a little bit of water to keep it a bit more moist. So I kind of like what's happening here. Um, let's look at this green and how I can make like a nice light version. You can use a bit of white. All right, and I actually like that creamy yellow. I'm going to leave that there. So I got a range of greens. And you can see I've spent a bit of time on my palette before I even start painting. And I've only mixed this range of greens that are going to go for this grassy area. Um, so you want to have a variety of colors, of tone. So I've been looking at light, mid-tone, and dark. And you want to have at least two of each too light, too mid-tone, too dark. So when I get into the painting, I can just paint. 
So I'm not kind of like dabbling into my palette and starting to create a mess, which everyone does when they start painting. So we really want to be a little bit more systematic about color mixing, and um, it's definitely going to pay off. So let's start. Um, I guess in this stage, we could just start with any color. And here, we're starting to look at mark making. Mark making is the way you lay your brush onto the canvas. You can paint slow, you can pay fa paint fast. That also will create a rhythm to your painting. And also, everyone have their own marks, their own energy in the mark, their own handwriting. So there isn't really a particular way of doing that. You'll just have to experiment and play. What I'm doing here is I'm weaving those colors together. So you see I've got all the different brushes, one light, one mid-tone, one dark and I'm painting and layering them on top. I'm kind of looking at putting them side by side, but sometimes they'll go on top of the other, which is just going to create a bit of blending and even bring in some more colors, more tones of green. That's, that's what's nice about painting where your painting is still wet. So you can see I keep loading my brush and I make sure that I've actually mixed quite a bit of paint. I'm not mixing a tiny bit of paint and then, oh, I ran out, I have to mix it again. So prepare yourself a nice batch from each color, especially when I'm going to work on this big area that is mostly green. And have a little bit of a celebration with your marks. Painting is messy. We don't want to make it too organized. We wanted to make it free and flowing and messy. <laughs> so that's something I always tell my students. Mess it up, break it up, change it, add more rhythm and flow into it. Vary your marks. Okay, maybe here it's even starting to look too similar. So I'll break it up, I'll paint over it. <clears throat> Painting is very forgiving. You can change it anytime. You can use a little bit bigger, a few bigger marks over here. Scoop the paint off my palette and just slap it on. We're still going to add much more detail to this area, so I'm not really worried about it in this stage. Weave the colors together. And also because this is closer to me, I can use larger brush marks as well. So you can do, use that to, do, to paint a Monet, like what I'm doing today. You can paint another artist, or you can even take a photograph of somewhere you love, somewhere you've been, somewhere you feel connected with, and you can use the same technique to paint from a photograph as well. Use the photograph as a source of information um, to look at light, dark, construction, composition. And then you can start adding your own colors. You can change things. So we're not copying. We're looking at something to learn from it, or we're looking at something to use it as a source of inspiration. You can change it in your painting. You can decide where the light is coming from, where the shadows are going to be cast, 
which area is warm, which area is cool, as long as you take all these things into consideration, you can make a pretty good painting. And of course, practice. The more you paint, you'll just get better at it. I'll add a little bit of highlights, even though we can add them a little bit later, but I just wanted to try this little cream and see how that works with all the other colors. And I think that's pretty good because that's what we want. We want this range of tones and gradation happening from dark tones to mid tones to mid mid tones to light tones to highlights. And that's only with greens. I haven't really woven all the other tones that are going to come in later. Um, yeah. So I'm going to let this area dry a little bit and move into the water. Um, the water here in this painting is flowing into the sky quite beautifully. You can't really see a lot of difference between the water and the sky. But when you really look into it, you start to see that kind of like little waves happening there while the sky has a different feel. And that brings us back to mark making. How am I using my brush to describe different areas in the painting? So the grass, it's going to be grassy. Just think about something growing, flowing. So you're going to use the brush in that way. Um, the water is, has this, this movement. So I'm going to use my brush just more like lines, horizontal lines flowing. The sky, I want it to have a bit more air and flow and movement. And I'm actually going to use more round kind of circular motion with the brush to describe the cloudiness and the air and that flow. So again, I'm going to use two round brushes and go into my blues. So um, just so you can see the difference, this is my white here. And I'm going to put another batch of white. I'm going to use the thalo blue. Thalo blue is very strong. You can see it's a very, very strong pigment. You only need a little bit of that. And so that you can see the difference to the ultramarine blue. They are very different. So when you look at them in their initial form, they look very similar. You go, that's a blue and that's a blue. But here you can see a very distinct difference between the two. So I would use this blue, the ultramarine, more for like maybe like a cloudy day. Um, and then this one, a stronger blue for something a bit more of a sunny day. That's how I'd like to look at those blues. This is still very strong. I want to add more white into it. And also, I'm actually going to add a dash of brown because it's still very strong. So you see, just with a tiny bit of brown, you don't want too much because you don't want to be brown. We still want to keep it in the range of blues, but look how beautiful it is now. It's just really much more subtle. Even a tiny bit of blue, I mean brown into this blue here, just to give it a little bit of more of a natural tone. And blue and brown go very well together because the brown is just bringing it into a more earthy kind of natural place. So yeah, let's start painting so I can start weaving those colors. This is the ultra blue. So you look how you see how it's looking quite gray actually on top of that very bright blue that I've got on the bottom. And then I've got this thalo blue, which actually looks quite greeny. Which is good because it's going to connect with the grass that I've done here. Can use bigger brush marks here where the tree is going to be anyway. 
and add a bit more blue. It's almost purpley, the ultra blue. A bit of phthalo here. So when I've got some white, wet paint on my canvas, I can then blend in whatever I've done with another tone. You can see you can get like a really nice effect quite quickly. All right, awesome. So um, maybe a little bit of that cream here. Where the sun is coming, shining on the water. And light is color, color is light. Everything we look at is reflective and is reflecting other colors. So that's really where the whole theory of color and color mixing and painting is coming from. We're just thinking how everything is connected how everything relates to another, how the grass, the water, the sky, the sun, how do they all come together with the use of color. So maybe a few more of these. There and there. I don't want it to be too strong though, so I'm going to blend them in. with the blue. So I always paint with a few brushes in my hand. If you look at Monet's photographs in his studio, he's holding his um, palette and he's got like six brushes sticking out of it because he would use all his brushes in the same time rather than washing them. You don't want to just use the same brush. Plus you're going to get all sorts of different marks and different uh, yeah, different marks from different brushes, so you want that variety as well. Okay, I think that's good for now. Let's go into the sky. I'm going to use a, a wider brush for the sky. If I'm looking at um, the scale of my painting, that's probably a good scale to this area here. I'm even just going to use white with a bit of a dirty brush from the dirty water. I don't usually change my water. I like them dirty <laughs> because it just adds a little bit of flavor to the other colors. Unless, of course, you need something to be clean, then you're going to clean. So this area, for example, we have the water, we have the sky, but I want to blend that. I want to create a little bit of a um, transition here, so we can't really see what the horizon line is. I think that's what's really beautiful about this Monet's painting, and what's creating that magic is that the horizon line is actually not very um, clear, it's very blurry. So here I'm using a dry brush, no water, just a bit of a dry brush to blur this area. And it just gives it a bit of a feel of this like foggy day or maybe early morning, which that's what the Impressionists were about, capturing the light of the day, capturing how it changes, how it flows. And again, I'm using this kind of like roundish, fluffy clouds kind of stroke to bring that feel to the sky. Um, wider brush. I like to use a white. Could be a flat brush. It can also be a round brush, but quite a nice wide one to let it kind of open. And I'm actually pressing on the brush to kind of open the hair and really kind of press and push into those areas. Now I can add a touch of this creamy yellow. Not too much, so I'm just rendering on top a little bit because I think Again, what's beautiful about the Monet's painting, that everything is very subtle. I might even go back over it with white and push it again. 
it's going to come through, but it's not going to be so strong. So yeah, everything is very subtle, it's very suggested, and you only notice it if you really, really look closely, which that's what we do as artists. And also, if you're going to look at Monet's, this Monet's painting uh, for hours, it's not going to be the same if you're actually going to be painting it. So that's why I really recommend to use this gift of these great masters and look at some of their paintings and paint them. Just learn from them. How did they use those colors? How did they use the marks? How did they create this magic in their painting? Okay, so my sky looks quite nice. I might just leave them for now. And I feel like I want to add more to the water. Also, painting goes in stages. We're not just focusing on one area. We are looking at the whole picture. Because everything is related, now that I've got all the colors, that I have this beautiful like flow through in the sky, I can see that this is too blue and I actually want to knock it back. But it's good to have this blue as a background because it still gives the painting more depth. And also, the idea of layering is concealing and revealing. You are covering some areas, but you're also leaving some areas to come through, and that is the magic of layers. Painting is created with layers, Rembrandt has used 25 layers in his paintings, so we're going to use about three. I think that's okay. All right, a little bit more whitish flowing lines over here. And yeah, you can work on this painting for like a month. You know, you can keep adding and adding. Um, This painting was most likely created in the outdoors because um, Monet was all about the plein air when artists started to leave the studio, go outdoors and paint the nature as it is. So it would have been completed in the, that kind of like shorter window of time when you have that certain light uh, in, in place, in a particular place. Okay, a little bit of lighter tones. Now, I want to go back into this greeny area, which is a little bit drier than it was. So, as we looked at in the beginning, we saw that the right-hand side had all these cool tones. So, I'm going to start weaving blue. So in the beginning, it might look like, what is that doing there? But I'm going to then bring a bit of green and I'm gonna push it back into this grassy area. And you can see how beautiful it looks straight away. It's actually linking everything again to the water. So you can see how clever this painter was figuring out all these where painting was more realistic. It was more about what you see and how you capture it amazingly. But this was more about finding your own feelings and emotions and colors and just bringing a bit more joy into the process of painting as well. bit more blue here, and then again with another brush with the green when it's still wet, I'm pushing it into the former layer. I'm leaving this area a little bit darker, mix a bit more dark, blue, uh, because I want to show that it's changing here. And then I've got a few different 
levels. Also, I'm doing, I'm having this area, the corner here, a little bit cooler and darker. Uh, and also the bottom of the canvas. There. A little bit darker, because then it lifts the eye a little bit up. You can see he's done it all across. Let's bring some mid-tone here just to blend into this dark. And I've woven this green with the blue. I don't want too much of that. So allow yourself to put the wrong color in the wrong place. Because that's what's going to make you paint and change and add and layer, which that's what you want to do. Otherwise, you're just painting by numbers and you're not allowing yourself to be more flowing with the painting. So sometimes it's good to actually make mistakes. Sometimes those areas where you have a mistake becomes the most beautiful part of your painting. So that's part of the magic, I think. It's just letting go, being in a beautiful state and zone. Don't think too much about the results. Just allow yourself to be in that process, in that meditative space of painting, enjoying, enjoying it. Let's look at this area here. Now this is our warm area, which has got a, bit, a few little marks in blue, but uh, I want to actually mix some of this creamy. I did add some reds, which I'm not going to use too much red really for this painting. Just a bit of vermilion red and white and a tiny bit of that green that was on my brush just to make it a bit more earthy and I'm just going to weave it through here and look how beautiful it is. It's just changing the whole feel of that grassy green because otherwise my painting is going to be green and blue, and that might be a bit boring. So all these like different tones that are woven into it are just going to give it that extra spice and flavor. A bit of that cream here. And if it's too much, you just go over it. And adding some dark. Break it up. Change your brush marks, some dots, some lines. You can see I'm going all sorts of different directions as well to just give it some movement. And then I'm going to use yellow with a bit of deep yellow. Might be a bit brave, but I'm going to do it anyway and stick it over here. Maybe a little bit up here. And again, because everything is wet, it is blending in. And you can clearly see how this is warm and this is cool. It starts to recede uh, in the picture plane. It starts to look much deeper, and it's, this starts to look closer. And this is really um, the whole idea of warm and cool in paintings. Often, when you're going to look at um, landscape paintings, you're going to see that one area is warm, one area is cool, light, dark. Uh, significantly, you can see areas that will be highlight or shadowed and that's what's creating the sense of depth, perspective, uh, that is created by color alone, even not with um, actual drawing of the perspective. Um, okay, so I'm going to add some of these 
little bushes here. This also creates a bit of a connection uh, between the grassy area and the ocean. This just finishes it off in more irregular shape. And I've used a bit of um, green with purple and blue. So those colors are very close in the color wheel. So they would always work together. It almost looks like black. By the way, I didn't use any black. I suggest not to use black with landscape paintings. The Impressionists didn't use any black because black just makes everything muddy. Now I'm weaving a little bit of ultra blue into there and I can also see a little bit of a lighter bluish areas, just a little fine highlights. Some places, not everywhere. Change the directions to make it look more irregular. And again, it's creating a bit of a connection to the background. So it's all about weaving everything together. Okay, I think we're kind of getting into the look that we want. The warm, the cool, the nice flow. It feels like there's wind blowing on that day and the tree is kind of like heading that way. So it must have been a windy beach. So I think I'm ready for the tree. Burnt umber, a bit of blue, just to make it a bit deeper, a bit more, some purple. So again, you can see I've laid all the cool dark colors on this side of the palette and the warm ones are here. This is the traditional way of laying your palette from white all the way to the darker color. And that helps you also in your mixing it's not just going everywhere and getting messy. There is a system for it all after all, which is good. It's good to have a little bit of a system. So now I'm just drawing it in. You can use a bit more water on the side here just to um, have the more um, consistency, thinner consistency for the paint. So I can create this really thin brushes and branches happening here with a thin brush. So before I'm putting those um, leaves and things, I just first want to create the structure of the tree, even though I can't see that it's still under there and I'm sure that Monet did the same he just drawn it first going back into my watery pile there and yeah bringing that in it's very like you can see how beautiful a painting can be just with one tree. It's like such a beautiful, poetic tree standing by itself on the beach and blown by the wind. And it's just it's this beautiful shape came out of it. OK, let's get into some leaves. I'm going to start with the dark and literally just tap, tap, tap. I want to start it quite lightly, so I'm just scattering my marks across 
leaving a lot of air and space in between. So I can then slowly fill it up as I go. And decide which areas I'm actually going to leave. To be more like the windows into the sky. So yeah, I guess you can uh, put your favorite music in the background for this moment when you just I feel like when I'm doing little things, I'm almost like holding my breath and just really just being in that moment, which is very beautiful. Place to be. Hmm. Get in there. So also in the tree, which looks quite dark, but when you look up closer, there are loads of different tones. Here is a lighter green. And just like everything else, practice, practice is the best. So you get the results when you um, allow yourself to be more flowing with the paint, to be more daring with mixing colors. Experiment with brush marks. Experiment in general. Painting is not a safe zone. It's a safe zone to be, but it's not a safe zone in that, in that place where you actually, you want to go out of your comfort zone and you want to experiment and try all sorts of different variations of using paint brushes and mixing and just allowing this whole process to flourish and flow and take over, allow the process to take over um, your initiatives I guess there's a, a few theories about, you know, painting from the right brain when you're switching into more intuitive, emotional, more of a deeper space when you can be and you don't need to think about it too much. So you're kind of switching off this uh, more rational, result-driven left brain. All right, let's get into some fun little pinkies, pinky little marks. I probably actually want to put my hand here for that part because I just want it to be very fine. And it doesn't mean that there were flowers on this tree. It might just be that he wanted to add those little marks just to show the variation of tone on the leaves and how they actually flow and they connect to everything else on the canvas as well. Use a smaller brush, a bit of a mid green, and even looks a little bluey in some areas. It's quite blue as well. And I guess, you know, overall, um, painting this quite quickly, uh, you can spend days on this painting. You can wait for it to dry, you can add more layers as you go, you can go and revisit it again 
tomorrow. Like if I look at this area here, I would add much, much more tiny little marks and build it up and build it up. And um, yeah, Monet built up his paintings with many, many more layers than what I'm just showing here. Might add a little bit of blue with a touch of green just to give it that coolness, especially on that side, because this is the shadow side, this is the warmth coming through this corner, and I just want to give it a bit more shadow and coolness on this side. Just fill it up a little bit. Mm. Now, a little bit of highlight on my tray. Again, the light is coming from this angle, so it's flowing from there. So I'll put a bit of mid tone. And then even just with a bit of white, as long as this is, ooh, this is actually wet, I can weave it through there. And some of those branches, even use my finger. Again, a touch of blue here as well. Again, connecting areas bit more dark there. Okay, so um, I think we're kind of getting into completion uh, of this painting. So usually um, students come to my classes. It takes a couple of classes to complete this painting, which is about four hours. So yeah, probably be a good idea to spend about four to five hours on this one. Really observe, really look at the detail uh, of each section and how you can change it, how you can push it more to get even more out of each area uh, to make it more convincing, interesting and flowing. And so yeah, I'm quite happy with it. What I really wanted to achieve with this painting is just showing you all the stages of how to get started with landscape painting, how to use your brushes, how to mix your colors, and how to bring that glow and magic and atmosphere into the painting. So I'm glad you could join me today and I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, keep creative and paint on.